Priyanshi, the eye of the cyclone is perhaps a very crucial aspect of the cyclone. The diameter is 50, uh, 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 is relatively uh, bigger, now larger. Now, what does this really mean? Could you break this down for us? Well, no other, uh, no better person to explain this really than the DG of the Indian Meteorological Department, Mr. Mohapatra, who's joining us live. And so my first question to you that the landfall started a couple of hours ago, and you're saying that it's likely to complete by midnight. So can you show us what all we can expect for the next few hours till midnight? Uh, uh, already the peak wind speed, uh, which is uh, occurring at the time of landfall, uh, that is going on. And uh, by next three hours, it will further um, uh, weaken as the almost some part of uh, the core structure of the cyclone is over land. And complete landfall process will be completed by midnight. And therefore, um, uh, it will now show the decreasing tendency in its intensity while moving northeastwards. And by morning of tomorrow, it will become... Uh, reduced to a marginally severe cyclone storm with marginally cyclone storm with wind speed of 70 to 80 kilometers per hour over the interior districts of um, uh, Saurashtra. Right. And um, by that time, if you look at the wind speed near the coast, it will be around 55 to 65 kmph. By afternoon, hmm. wind speed will be only 40 to 50 kmph uh, right. uh, over the Saurashtra and Kutch region. So therefore, the impact of wind speed can be expected for, uh, severe impact can be expected for next three hours only. Hmm. Thereafter, it will be significantly reduced gradually. But the rainfall will continue. Hmm. Uh, we are expecting heavy to extreme heavy rainfall as you see the cloud mass over this uh, area. And gradually, this cloud mass will move towards northeast, therefore covering entire Saurashtra and Kutch. And thereafter, it will move towards the southern parts of Rajasthan. And so therefore, on 16th, we can expect heavy to very heavy rainfall over uh, uh, districts, uh, interior districts especially, over Saurashtra and Kutch and northern parts of Gujarat region. And uh, 16th and 17th, we can also explain, ex expect uh, heavy to extremely heavy rainfall over the southern parts of Rajasthan hmm. um, because it is moving and by 16th evening, it will become a depression over Rajasthan. And thereafter, on 17th, as we will move northeastwards, then uh, rainfall activity will further increase, uh, uh, further decrease uh, over Gujarat, but it will increase over West Tempe and adjoining East Rajasthan. Right. So, but these uh, um, uh, heavy rainfall, what we are expecting on 15th and 16th over Gujarat, that can lead to localized uh, inundations or you can say uh, in the low-lying areas. Um, but uh, over the South Rajasthan also on 16th and 17th, there will be rainfall. Some areas which are low-lying, there can also we can expect uh, inundations. Right. After that, after 17th, there is not much significant impact of the system. So the peak damage uh, that we'll see will be by midnight, you're saying? Yes. Right. Yes. And so if you look at this uh, live tracker that's that's through a satellite, we're seeing that this is the Jakau port. And this is where the eye of the cyclone is really close to. So what can we expect till midnight and why is the eye hitting the coast significant? Why does that matter in the cyclone? The eye hitting the coast is significant in the sense that the area where the eye will pass through, mm. that area will experience the first uh, uh, the wall cloud. That is the... Uh, very dense convective cloud which looks like a wall surrounding the eye. Mm. That's its name is wall cloud or eye wall. And that wall cloud region is very dangerous because it will have the maximum wind speed and also the maximum rainfall. Once the forward sector of the wall cloud has moved, mm. then eye comes off. In the eye region, there will be very light uh, rain or no rain and there will be also very light wind. So mm. people feel that the cyclone has gone. Mm. But actually, the cyclone center or cyclone eye is over that area. Mm. Then after some time when the eye moves to the land, the rear sector of the cyclone comes off. And that is also the part of the wall cloud. Mm. And that wall cloud also contains very dense convective clouds and hence can have torrential rain. And also wind speed also will be almost similar to that wind speed which was prevailing in the forward sector. But in the opposite direction, wind will blow. Right. So therefore, wind blowing from the opposite direction with the similar wind speed uh, can 
have devastating impact right so the eye hitting the coast would sort of be like the calm before the storm and after that we would see high uh, speed wind and heavy rainfall again yeah you are correct to some extent but it's not calm before the storm but calm within the storm within the storm <laughs> right after we've seen one part of the so yes. storm my last question sir we are seeing that the diameter of this very eye that we're seeing I, i would like to show the viewers here this is the eye that we're talking about this is likely to hit the jakhau port it's just uh, what 20 30 Kilometers away, so about uh, at, at 9:30, it was about 20 kilometers uh, right. uh, south uh, west of Jakhau. So by 11:30, this eye will hit the Jakhau port, and after that, uh, now Dr. Mahapatra is saying that the, we'll see the maximum damage over the Jakhau port, which will be around midnight. That's when we'll see the maximum damage. Last question, sir: the diameter of this eye for Cyclone Bipojoy is around 50 kilometers, but we've seen for Tokte three years ago the diameter was around. 40 kilometers so with higher diameter what does that mean for the intensity and how would you compare the expected damage for this cyclone compared to the previous few cyclones we've seen eye diameter is a representative of the intensity of the cyclone higher the diameter of the eye lower is the intensity so therefore the higher diameter of this cyclone as compared to cyclone taute indicates that the intensity of the cyclone is less as compared to taute If we remember, Taute has the maximum wind speed of 180 kilometers per hour when it hit the coast. But this cyclone, it is 115 to 125 kilometers per hour, coasting mm -hmm. 240 kilometers per hour. So therefore, about 40 to 50 kilometers uh, wind speed less intense in this cyclone as compared to Taute cyclone. Right. But therefore, accordingly, the damage which occurred in case of the Taute, it was large scale damage. It was extremely severe cyclone storm. But in this case, uh, relatively damage is expected. to be less so with this kind of wind speed what kind of damage can we expect but still the wind speed of 115 to 125 kmph is associated which is associated with a very severe cyclone storm can have large scale damage through the thatched houses mud houses um hordes slums um, uh, tin houses rajvistar houses Uh, even sometimes the some uh, old pakka houses also mm. in addition to that it can also lead to uprooting of trees breaking of tree branches of um, rigging of electric poles and telephone poles right Dr. Mahapatra, thanks very much for joining us and really explaining the details for us. And as you heard, that the intensity of this cyclone is likely to be less than Tokte, but the wind speed is still extremely high, and it can still damage houses, and it can inundate low-lying areas, and can uproot trees. What we are seeing already, but of course, we hope that the damage is as less as possible, and nobody loses their lives compared to Cyclone Tokte that claimed around 80 lives.